What's up guys, welcome to Neuron Network Introduction and today we will do a deep dive into neuron networks with a basic network training technique called backpropagation. After watching this video, you will know and understand how to build and train your own networks from scratch. How neuron networks work Let's start from understanding how artificial neuron networks work. To put it simple, neuron networks are just a net of neurons connected to each other. However, there is a pattern to how we connect neurons. First, we group neurons into our layers. First layer is called input layer. In our example, we define three input nodes marked as green circles. Next, we have a hidden layers. There is no limit for how many layers we can define. For this example, we create two hidden layers, first with five neurons and second with four. Finally, we define output layer with two neurons, represented by two yellow circles. We connect the adjacent layers by linking every neuron in one layer to every neuron in the next layer. Each connection between neurons has an assigned weight. This weight value determines the importance of the input from the connected neuron to the neuron in the next layer. A weight of 0 means that the neuron disregards this input, essentially disabling the connection. Conversely, a weight of 1 indicates that the signal is highly significant. These weights are fundamental to a neuron network's operations. During the training process, the neuron network adjusts the weight to better align with the provided training and testing data, thereby improving its accuracy and performance. In our example, the neuron will accept three input values, try to return two output values based on those inputs. But what exactly are the input and output in neural network? How do we use them? Imagine we train our network to predict students' performance on an exam. We can use the following three input values. How are we studying for exam? This will be input 1. Class attendance percentage, input 2. Number of practical problems solved, input 3. Based on this input, our two output nodes could predict the likelihood of passing the exam, that will be output 1, the likelihood of scoring above 90% on the exam, output number 2. Forward pass. Ok, so how we calculate network output? Let's set the input layer to some random values. Next, we start calculating the state of neuron, beginning with the input layer and moving layer by layer until we reach the output layer. We proceed this way because each layer used the previous one as an input. Remember that each neuron has its own connection, each with a unique weight assigned. We zoom in on the first neuron to closely examine how its state is calculated. The number above the connection represents the weight assigned to the neuron. To calculate the neuron state, we first multiply each input by its corresponding weight. We then add this product together and apply the activation function assigned to this neuron. This gave us a neuron output value. Great, we have calculated the state for the first neuron in a hidden layer. We repeat this process for every single neuron in that layer. Although we use the same input for the entire layer, each neuron has its own connection and weight, resulting in different output values. Once we finish with the first hidden layer, we move on to the next one. The process remains the same, but this time our input is the output from the previous layer. Finally, we move to the last layer, the output layer. In this example, for our given input, the first neuron in the output layer might be 90% sure that it recognizes the pattern, while the second neuron might be 20% sure. Neuron Network Training The question is, how do we train this network to recognize patterns? Let's assume that our expected result for this input is 100% for the first neuron and 0% for the second. We start by subtracting our result from the expected result. We do this for each output neuron separately. This tells us how far off we were with our prediction. We now have the data needed to train output neurons. To train the other neurons, we need to propagate this error through every neuron in the network. We need to determine how each neuron contributes to the error and adjust them accordingly. This algorithm is called backpropagation. Let's examine the propagation for a single neuron. We take the neuron input weight and use them to scale error by simple multiplication. We pass that error to the input node. Neuron connected with the higher weight contributes more to the final output and the final error. We repeat this for every output neuron. We end up with two error values per neuron because each output is connected to every input neuron. 
we simply add these values together to average them out. Once we finish with this layer, we move to the next one. After propagating the error for each neuron, we can train them independently. At this point, we have propagated the error to every neuron in our network, so it's time for training. Each neuron is trained separately. To train it, we need the neuron's input weight, activation function, and output error. We will simulate training for one neuron. This is the formula for updating weight. The yellow eta value is the training speed value. It defines how quickly weights should react to training. A higher value means faster learning, but less accuracy, while a lower value means slower, but more accurate learning. The red delta is the neuron's propagated error. Because the neuron returns output from the activation function, we need to know how the function changed based on the input to adjust the weight correctly. This is why we use the function derivative. Finally, we need to consider the neuron input value. A large input value means it contributes more to the final output and requires a bigger adjustment. The sum symbol, like in the forward pass, represents the weighted input sum. Now we can calculate the weight adjustment using our sample data. First, we calculate the weighted sum, just like in the forward pass. We multiply each input by its corresponding weight and add them together. We assume a training speed for this iteration. We need to update all five weights. We swap eta and delta in our formula. Next, we calculate the derivative. This is our formula after simplifying. Now we can swap xi with the actual input value used for that training. Finally, we can update weights. We have to do this for every neuron in the network. To fully train the network, we need to repeat this process multiple times with different data and training eta values. With each run, our network should get better at predicting the output. Coding We will start coding from simple window applications that show black screen. We start by defining few activation functions and pair them with their derivative. We put them in array and create lookup function that will return correct activation function by their name. Next, we need a way to define network layers. We will create a simple layer config that contains requested neuron count and the name of the activation function used for neuron in that layer. We then define network class and constructor that accept layer config for input layer, hidden layer, and an output layer. We go back to our main function and define our network. We will try to use neural network to learn how to color pixel based on screen coordinations. This means our input layer will have two nodes. We will try to split 2D space into five sections. Each will be marked with different color. To do it, we will use five output neurons. Each neuron will be responsible for recognizing one section. We will try to add two hidden layers, both with eight neurons. All layers will use sigmoid activation functions. Now we define functions for calculating network state and training. Calculate function will accept input parameter and array to hold output. Output array size should be at least the same size as output layer. Training function will accept input, expected output, and a current training step, eta value. At this point, we know we will need quick access to activation function. And for training purpose, we will need arrays to store neuron sum, derivation, and propagated error. We also need to know each layer size.
Next, we create all layer vector that will contain size of each layer in order, including input and output layer. This will simplify code. We will not have to write extra line to handle input and output layer. Our network needs weights to work. Let's count how many weights we need and allocate memory for that. All weights will be stored in one array to optimize memory usage. So we need additional offset array that will tell us where each layer data starts. Good weight initialization is crucial for neural network training. We'll use normal distribution. We do the same memory optimization for neuron data like weighted sum, input, output, deviations, and error. And we need to have a lookup tables for them too. Time for forward pass method. We first copy input data into neuron data table. We'll iterate over all layers in neural network. Remember that each layer takes previous one as an input. We iterate over every neuron in current layer and calculate neuron output. We will store weighted sum to use them later in training. Last layer is an output layer, so we just return it. It is time for training. First we run calculate method. We need this so we can compare this value to expected one. Then we calculate the deviant for every neuron. Now we can start error back propagation. First we subtract current output from expected. We use this as an output layer error. Now we move from last layer to input layer and use neuron weight to propagate errors. We are now ready to go through every neuron and update weights. Time to generate some data. We start by creating function that will assign each screen pixel into a group. This is what we try to achieve. Once we have this function, we create another one that will use it to generate random data set. Pick color method will assign color to each group. This is for drawing purpose. Let's draw generated dataset to make sure if we done it correctly.
it is time to use our data for training. Finally, we use our network to assign each pixel to a group. Let's run our network and check if everything is working. Within such a short time, our network gets pretty good at assigning pixels to requested pattern. You can now experiment with different activation functions and train steps to check how it will affect our output. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. See you next time.